This is Bewilderbeasts, an infotainment show dedicated to inspiring curiosity for all ages by investigating the ways animals intersect at humanity. I am not a historian, an ethologist, a researcher, a scientist, a zoologist, a trained audio engineer, or an expert in, well, anything. Y'all, I'm lucky if I can remember to put my clean laundry in the dryer before it gets funky. And while I make every effort to present things as accurately as I can with a fun flair, I'm going to mess up. And that's okay. I hope I've given you a nice place to jump off from on your own adventures into curiosity. Or at the very least, I've given you the key to win your next round of trivia. And welcome to Bewilder Beasts, recording in the closet under the stairs. I'm your host, Melissa McKee McGrath, and today we have an unlikely spy who got her culinary start making shark repellent. Okay, let's go. Happy December, everyone! I'm So happy y'all are here, and I have a delightful episode for you today. We have it all. We have ladies, we have spies, we have cooking shows, we've got sharks. I'm so pumped. And I hope you haven't heard of this one yet, because I was stunned when I learned about this earlier in the week from one of my favorite podcasts, Wine and Crime. It is absolutely not for children, but they had a whole bit on this that I absolutely was obsessed with and decided to do some digging on my own to figure out what's the what and what's behind this whole tale. So without further ado, let's start learning about the absolute boss lady spy named Julia, as in Julia Child. Okay, well, let's just start with the lead. Julia Child, y'all, was a spy. And her first recipe was for shark repellent for the CIA. Okay, episode over. Just kidding. I'll gloss over some early history facts. She was born over 100 years ago in 1912. And when Julia peaked at 6 foot 2 inches tall, it was clear she was going to stand out whether she liked it or not. And while I'm not sure how many women's sports there were in the 19-teens, due to her height, she was naturally the captain of the women's basketball team. From high school, she then moved on to Smith College, where she was, and this was a thing, part of a club called the Grass Cops, where, yes, the entire premise was to keep people off the lawn. I don't think they had a ton of feminist clubs back at the time, so Grass Cop it was. From the Vintage Smith Tumblr account, quote, in 1924, the politeness police was formed as an advocate of thoughtfulness and respect among the students and citizens of Northampton displaying an official-looking police badge, they were on the lookout for miscreants who trespassed on the grass, ate pastries or candy on the main street, saved seats at the movies, and walked more than two abreast on city streets. (laughs) This group later focused on campus infractions and became known as the Grass Cops. Which is funny that she was the Grass Cops because... Not that long ago, Northampton was the first of many marijuana legal dispensaries in the state of Massachusetts. Anyway, the image that accompanied this quote was in black and white because, you know, we hadn't invented color yet. I mean, color photography. We had color. You just couldn't see it. The image had a woman in a long wool coat on the paved path with a whistle in her mouth as she was physically grabbing another woman and pulling her off the grass. It's, well, it's something. But here's where things get super interesting. In 1941, World War II was in full swing. Julia Child wanted to do something to help her country, so she applied to two organizations. The Women's Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, or WAVES. All right, nice acronym. Or the Women's Army Corps, WAX. Remember her height, six foot two? Yeah, both the Navy and the Army said, uh, girl, you too tall. Hmm. Undeterred, I can only imagine, she left California. Can you even imagine Julia Child, future spy, cook extraordinaire, as like a Katy Berry style of California girl? 
Snoop Dogg jumping in with a bridge, rapping about how hot she'd melt their popsicles. I'm just tickled. Anyway, she got herself transferred to Washington, D.C. from California. She eventually found herself in as a junior assistant to Wild Bill Donovan, the first head of the OSF, a secret described as, quote, shadowy new government agency. Yeah, y'all, this is the beginning of the CIA. Julia Child was in on the ground floor of the CIA. She was denied by the Army and the Navy and said, sure, I'll just take my discreet six-foot-tall giant foot frame and work for a cutting-edge spy agency. They totally took her, and I love everything about this. So it was here that the sharks come in. She was promoted to an executive assistant to Harold Jefferson Coolidge Jr., a zoologist. Not just any zoologist. After overseeing Julia Child, spy detective, he went on to found the International Union for Conservation of Nature and the World Wildlife Fund. This is the same group that sued and won the rights to the acronym WWF, the initials and the branding against Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Hulk Hogan himself. Yeah, the pandas versus the wrestling superstars, pandas win. So Julia Child was working with the eventual founder of the WWF on a project called Emergency Sea Rescue Equipment Section, or ESRES? Yeah, they clearly hadn't mastered the art of code names or acronyms in the early years of the CIA. She basically was tasked with cooking up a little spicy something something that would repel sharks. See, there had been multiple shark attacks against the U.S. Navy officers since the start of the war. And additionally, if a pilot was shot down over the ocean and somehow could survive, it would just totally suck if he was then eaten by a shark. So the repellent would just be rubbed on pilots to buy them time. And that wasn't all. Curious sharks had often set off explosives meant for Germans, not underwater sea life. So the OSS dedicated resources to create shark repellent. One of those resources was future famous Ben French chef, Julia Child. And after trying over a hundred different ideas, including poison, organic acids, and even the decaying meat of a shark itself, and year-long field tests, this research team, which included Julia Child, found out that copper acetate was the most effective shark repellent. And yes, thanks to the CIA joining social media in the late 20 teens and wanting some likes, they tweeted in 2015 their secret recipe. And I'm going to add some flourishes. As Julia Child would say, First, you preheat your oven to shark murder. Then you take a dash of copper acetate. If you don't have that, buttermilk and arsenic will be just fine. Mix with some black dye, bake until lightly crispy. Don't lick your fingers, obviously. Voila, a shark repellent cake for all of your please don't eat me needs. Okay, that was a little too flourishy. The actual tweet just mentioned copper acetate, black dye, and shark repellent cake. Ew. I took some liberties. The idea behind Julia Child's first recipe was to release a dead shark smell to deter sharks from attacking. And no, it didn't really work. Quote, slight repellence was noticed. But I am not going into shark-infested waters with, quote, slight repellence. According to the CIA's Twitter account, that still just makes me giggle, in 1944, the U.S. Navy issued a training guide based on the OSS shark research to help get ahead of shark myths, including the uber-helpful, keep moving, don't let the shark confuse you for a corpse. And I guess if you were a corpse, it wouldn't matter so much. The cartoons that look like something out of an Andy Cap comic strip that was about a working British guy who didn't actually work. But these comic images in 1944 paired with the don't die by sharks if you're shot down in the war, I'm sure might have missed the proverbial mark. After Shark Week's Twitter pinged the CIA Twitter, a sentence I don't think I would ever say, suggesting that maybe the CIA shouldn't have posted this and shouldn't this be classified? The CIA social media guru then posted a page from the Don't Get Eaten by Sharks manual from 1944, and it had seven very helpful tips, including 1. There is very little danger from sharks. 2. People suffer more from shark fright than shark bites. 
Well done, CIA. Equally helpful? Number three, staunch a bleeding wound as soon as you are free from your parachute. This not only will prevent you from attracting sharks, but may keep you from bleeding to death. Ye. Four, keep your head while waiting for rescue. You can't win a shark fighting match, but you can win in a shark thinking match. I don't know if this is entirely true, but it sounds like the stuff my military dad absolutely would have said to us as children. Five, don't believe anyone's shark stories, even if they can show you the ocean it happened in. A shark is a fish, and a fish story quickly gets out of hand. All fish stories are not lies, but very few are handicapped by statistics. <sighs> Sorry about the ableist language, it was the 40s, and I hope that it's not something that they would say anymore in the military manuals today. Also very helpful. Number six, if you are in a life raft instead of a life vest, do not dangle your bare feet overboard. A fish, not necessarily a shark, may confuse you for a feather spinner and chew it off. I kind of feel that this is very unhelpful for those who are in life vests instead of a life raft. And least helpful of all because I have a phobia and in no situation does the logic, quote, they're more frightened of you, ever work. Number seven, the U.S. military said this to help soldiers bobbing like a buoy in open water. And above all, don't be frightened just because a shark happens to be in the same water as you. If the truth were known and the shark is probably more frightened of you, then you possibly can be of him. I doubt this very much. But okay, U.S. military, the comic style illustration had a shark on a plate featured after this last item, which, I mean, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, but... I think I'd classify this list as hashtag helpful, not helpful. And that it doesn't really help with shark knowledge and probably didn't help the guys in life vests at all. After making shark repelling cakes, Julia Child said, quote, I heard they were planning to send people overseas and I just knew sometime I would like to get over to France. So keep in mind, during a few years in the early 1940s, Julia freaking Child was volunteering to go overseas to keep intelligence files. Oddly enough, her intelligence work actually led her to discover her passion for food by way of her husband, fellow spy, Paul Child. This is the strange but true story of how Julia Child's spy career led her to become an iconic celebrity chef. Though I think I would prefer to read her recipe for, like super awesome chocolate cake instead of eh, super unhopeful shark repellent cakes. But you know what? We've all got to start somewhere. So thank you for joining me today on Bewilderbeast. If you like these stories, go check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash bewilderbeastpod. We have stories over there about Pokemon-inspired animals that are absolutely real, hippos in Colombia brought in by cocaine drug lord Pablo Escobar, and how those same hippos are the world's largest invasive species because hippos are not indigenous to Colombia. And they also have migrating testicles, which is making it really hard for veterinarians to neuter them. So bob on over there and support at any level, and you get an RSS feed for all of the bonus episodes that are already there, and one extra one at least a month. And thank you to all the supporters. Y'all rock, and I can't thank you enough. So if there are topics that you would be interested in hearing about on the podcast, know of any historical animals who have changed the world, animals who help humans, or famous people who have a shady past and an animal tie-in, send it in to bewilderbeastpod at gmail.com. Tweet a Bewildered Pod, Bewildered Beast Pod on Facebook, and Bewildered Beast on Instagram. I'm Melissa McHugh McGrath with Mud Stuff Media. Now go get curious. I got today's information from jstor.org, vintagesmith.tumblr.com for that amazing photo of grass cop Julia Child, tasteofhome.com, wikipedia.org, all that's interesting.com, intelligence.gov. The LA Times, and this brings me great joy, the CIA's Twitter account, and Shark Week's Twitter account, and Wikipedia on Andy Cap. Links, as always, are in the description of today's episode. 
Intro music is Tiptoe Out the Back by Dan Leibowitz, and interstitial music is by MK2. Additional music provided by Pixabay and freesound.org. Don't forget to like and subscribe, review, and please share with your curious friends. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week.